Hello and welcome to Geology Concepts. This is the final lap of the current Connect series for the upcoming CGSE 2025 prelims. Here, we are going to discuss some of the very important developments in the past 3-4 months so that you can uh, revise them in a very uh, short period of time in a nutshell manner, right? So, without any further ado, let's get started. The topics uh, in this discussion will be miscellaneous in nature. So, whatever is important for your exam, I have compiled them in one place, right? So, let's get started with it. So, recently what happened is Supreme Court of India, in a case called Dr. Ballam Singh vs. Union of India, uh, dismissed the petition which challenged it, challenged the 42nd Amendment Act of 1976, saying that the inclusion of socialist and secular in the preamble is a emergency provision and it, and it should be uh, omitted from the constitution. So Supreme Court discarded this, right? So in this context, for our exam, we need to understand 42nd Amendment Act of 1976. What is this act? So this is refer often referred to as the mini constitution, which as you know, is uh, amended the preamble along with 40 articles, 7 schedule of the Indian constitution, then added 40 new articles and two new parts to the constitution. So it it, that's why it is called a mini constitution. Now the major changes that were made in the preamble are that it included words like socialist, secular and integrated. So these words, these three words were not originally present in the uh, preamble, but in 1976 amendment of foot amendment, which is 42nd amendment, these three word, uh, words are explicitly included in the constitution. Then it changed the unity of nation word to unity and integrity of nation. It also changed seven schedule. That means it's transferred some of the uh, subjects in the state list to the concurrent list so that uh, center can also make law on that, such as education, forest, protection of wild animals and birds, weights and measures, administration of justice, etc. Right? Then, in the um, since it, it was implemented during emergency time, so it also amended the Article 352 of the Indian Constitution and then authorized the president to declare emergency not only through throughout the India, also in par any part of India as well, right? And then it add added some new DPSPs as well, such as Article 39, that is to uh, um, uh, secure opportunity for a healthy development of children, 39A, equal justice and free legal aid, uh, 43A, that is participation of workers in management of industries, Article 48A, which uh, 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 refers to the protection of uh, environment and safeguarding the forest and wildlife. Along with that, two new parts were added, that is your fundamental duty. So this question has been asked in CGSE 2023 as well. So fundamental duty, that is a, a part 4A of the constitution, was added by the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act. Along with that, the part um, uh, XIVA, that is establishment of administrative tribunals, were also added through 42nd Constitutional Amendment. So for our exam, 42nd Constitutional Amendment of 1976 is important because it was recently in news, right? Now moving on, Recently, the G20 summit of this year's edition was uh, established in Brazil's Rio de Janeiro city. The theme was building a just world and sustainable planet, right? Now, if you chase the history, it was formed in 1999, that is the G20. Uh, it was formed in 1999 to address the global economic challenges, right? And now it includes representing 19 countries and two regional bodies, which are uh, African Union and European Union, right? Now, in 2023 edition of G20, which was held in India, a Troika was formed, which was to uh, assume the presidency. So, India assumed the presidency in 2023. This year, it was Brazil. And the next year, South Africa will preside the G20 summit. Now, there are certain outcomes of this G20 summit. You don't need to know them by detail, but just uh, remember the names. One is your uh, task force on glo uh, global mobili mobilization against climate change, that is TF Clima. Trop Tropical Forest Forever Facility, G20 Bioeconomy Initiative, and uh, the Digital Economy and AI Governance. These are the things that were completely um, uh, that were uh, discussed in a fair amount of detail in the recently held Rio G20 Summit. Okay. Now moving on, there is a scheme in news called uh, PM Vidya Lakshmi Scheme, which was recently approved by Union Cabinet, which aims to provide financial support to meritorious students. Right. And it also ensures that that financial challenges do not hinder anyone in India from pursuing quality higher education. Now, what is, this is the objective. Now, for uh, to uh, be eligible, the uh, uh, it, will, it is available for students who are admitted to top 860 institutes, higher educational institutes as per the NIRF ranking. Okay, and it will cover 22 lakh students annually. 
So it is a loan feature which offers collateral free, guarantor free education loans and it is user friendly and digital application process are there in place, right? So what happens is government will provide 75% credit guarantee of loans up to 7.5 lakhs which will be provided to banks and then banks will transport this uh, credit uh, credit under PM Vidya Lakshmi scheme. So if family income is up to 8 lakhs, 3% interest submission will be given and if it is under 4.5 lakh then complete uh, submission, uh, submission of interest is in place, right? So it has a unified portal which uh, be, will be accessible through PM Vidya Lakshmi portal which enables easy loan applications and also interest submission processing via e-vouchers and central bank digital currency wallets, right? So that's the PM Vidya Lakshmi steep. Now recently a report was uh, released which is called the Network Readiness Index of 2024 where India has climbed 11 ranks that is previously in 2023 India was ranked 60 but this year's edition ranks India at 49th position uh, uh, which shows that it has significantly improved its digital transformation and telecommunication infrastructure as well right. Now who publishes it? There is an institute called Portulens which is a non-profit in institution based in Washington DC and it evaluates 133 economies around the world on four pillars such as technology, people, governance and impact. And it has 54 other variables, right? Now India rank, like I said, it has improved from 60, 60th to this year, it is 49, right? Now, if you see in uh, um, in the digital or cyberspace, India's leadership is significant. It ranks first in terms of AI scientific publication, AI talent concentration, and as well as ICT or uh, information and communication technology services exports. Second in building internet uh, subscriptions, mobile broadband and internet traffic, etc. Also, it is ranks fourth in invest investment in terms of investment in telecommunication services. Right now, if you see globally, then India ranks. Uh, at uh, second position among the lower middle income countries and Vietnam tops the rank, right? So this is all about the Network Readiness Index of 2024. Now recently, the COP29 summit of UNFCCC, that is United Nations um, framework on cli uh, climate change was held in Azerbaijan's capital Baku, right? So what are the outcome? So they, recently they have decided that a new collective quantified goal has been in has been put in place to triple the climate finance that was uh, previously 100 billion dollars annually it has to increase by usd 300 billions by 2035 right then carbon markets were finalized under article 6 of the paris agreement they finalized a framework for country to country trading of carbon trading uh, carbon credits then there uh, 13 countries submitted their biennial uh, transparency reports um, um, uh, on what actions they have taken uh, regarding their nationally determined contributions. Adaptation, if you see, Baku Adaptation Roadmap was launched, uh, which uh, will uh, expedite the national adaptation plans among uh, um, uh, developed countries as well as establishing such certain support programs for least developed countries as well. Then, indigenous people and local communities are also to be included through Baku Work Plan. Then, gender and climate change was also talked about that is gender climate action plan was to be developed by COP30 that will be held next year. Civil society and inclusivity, 55,000 attendees were uh, there from a civil society. And then global uh, uh, climate action was also in place that showcased the real world solution under Marrakesh partnership for global climate action. And it launched the uh, 2024 yearbook of global climate action, emphasizing non-party stakeholder contribution as well. Now, in terms of India, India also uh, proposed some of the initiative in COP29. The first one is resilient infrastructure. That is, it highlighted the importance of climate and disaster resilient infrastructure for adaptation, right? And then industrial decarbonization, that is, India is leading now the lead IT scheme to um, uh, which uh, is to um, um, decarbonize the heavy industry sector. It is in um, uh, uh, in collaboration with Sweden right now, and it promoted hydrogen-based solution and CO2 capture and storage, right? Then solar energy leadership. India has promoted that solar adaptation with International Solar Agency, and it targets that 20-fold increase will be done by 2050. And it also in, uh, uh, promoted the gender inclusive action plan. That is, it's okay that women-led clean energy solution and gender inclusive climate policies should be in place for achieving net zero in near future. Right. Now, most important thing is this uh, Indian state of India state of forest report 2023. 
every year, uh, every two years, this uh, report is released. And whenever this report is released, there is a question in CGSC, right? So we just need to remember what uh, what are the um, um, key insights and which states rank at what place in terms of forest and tree cover area, right? So if you see the largest forest and tree cover area is in Madhya Pradesh, followed by Arunachal, then Maharashtra. And the data for the, all this um, um, the, uh, interpretation was derived from ISRO's least 3 sensor on uh, uh, um, the uh, Indian remote sensing satellite that is resource sat satellites, right? And if you see the total forest cover on tree cover of India is around 25.17% of its geographical area. Now, highest percentage of tree cover, forest cover, sorry, uh, the highest percentage of forest cover is found in Lakshadir, which is 91% of its total geographical area, followed by Mizoram and then Andaman and Nicobar Island. If you see the Western Ghat eco-sensitive area, it has 73% of its total geographic area under tree and forest cover, but it has seen that there is a loss over 10, um, 10 years that the tree cover is uh, uh, is uh, gradually decreasing in this uh, Western Ghat eco-sensitive area, which is not a very good sign, right? Now, states with maximum change in forest cover, the maximum increase has been in, um, uh, witnessed in Chhattisgarh, but decrease, the maximum decrease is all uh, seen in Madhya Pradesh. Madhya Pradesh also has the highest or largest, sorry, largest uh, forest area, but the amount of decrease is also highest, right? And then uh, if you see the state by increase, then Chhattisgarh tops the chart, followed by UP, and then Odisha and then Rajasthan. So these four states, they have seen maximum increase in their forest and tree cover between 2021 to 2023. So these states uh, needs to be remembered because questions can come from this. Now, last, uh, then there is a uh, uh, award that is given by United Nations Environmental Program or UNEP, which is called the UN Champion of Earth Award, 20, uh, uh, Champion of Earth Award, which was given in this year, 2024, to Madhav Gargil, who, who was a, a veteran Indian ecologist and a, a well-known um, ecologist for his uh, Gargil report on Western Guard, right? Now let's talk a bit about Champion of the Earth Award. So it is given by UNEP and uh, it is the highest environmental honor and it has started from 2005, right? And uh, before uh, Madhav Gadgil, uh, this Champion of Earth Award is also given to our Prime Minister, Mr. Nor Narendra Modi uh, for uh, leadership in public policy, right? Then Madhav Gadgil's contribution, if you see, Western Ghats Conservation he has chaired the um, uh, Western Ghat uh, Ecology Expert Panel in 2011 and then he submitted a report called uh, Gargil Report where he recommended that 75% of the total uh, Western Ghat area needs to be uh, uh, named as ecologic, eco environmentally sensitive due to its unique biodiversity. But this recommendation has faced many resistance and then followed by certain subsequent reports of like Kasturi Rangan report, they have decreased the amount of area which should be uh, declared as um, eco-sensitive zone, right? Now, uh, recently the Mahakum Mela has also started, which will be held between January 13 to uh, February 26. And we need to understand its origin and its cycles, right? So origin, if you see, the um, origin can be traced back from Maurya and Gupta periods, that is between 4th century BC to 6th century CE, right? Cycles and locations, so it occurs every 12 years and it rotates between four holy locations like Prayagraj, Haridwar, Pujjain, Nashik and each with its sacred rivers, right? Sacred rivers are Gang Ganga, Yamuna, Sipra and Godavari, right? Now, Prayagraj pushed this year's Mela at Triveni Sangam, that is confluence of Ganga, Yamuna and the Saraswati river and it is considered highly um, auspicious for spiritual cleansing, right? Like I said, it was uh, can be traced back to Mauryan period up to Gupta period. So uh, a very large time uh, can be uh, given um, assigned to this Mahakum Mela. Now with that, uh, when uh, the Gupta rulers uh, came in, they uh, propagated the Hindu culture or the Hinduism spread in that uh, um, point of time. And during that time, uh, it has the Mahakum Mela has received a lot of patronage. In the colonial documentation, if you see James Princep in 19th century recorded its rituals large gatherings and socio-religious impacts as well. And recently, after post-independence, UNESCO recognized uh, um, this Kum Mela, Maha Kum Mela in 2017 as the intangible cultural heritage of humanity, right? So it is important as, as well because it has recognized by UNESCO as well, right? 
and there are certain temples in news recently so uh, tamil nadu recently uh, commemorated the birth anniversary of raja raja chola 1 who is a visionary chola emperor and he was known uh, very well for his administrative acumen as well as monumental construct uh, contribution in uh, architecture and culture of uh, the tanjavur region right so briyadasavar temple if you see it is located uh, in the premise of the uh, great living chola temples which was identified by unesco and it was built around 1009 ce by raja raja cholo 1 and the design has a feature of a massive 70 meter pyramidal vimana along with octagonal dome shaped stupika right it has two large gopuras two story lingams of lord shiva right and if you see uh, the artistry the stuka figures can be identified that is uh, they are added later during maratha period right and the painted murals sculptural narratives can also be seen in that region and other chola famous chola temples are uh, gangai konda chola puram by rajendra one again and airavatashwar temple by raja raja chola two so these are the uh, temples which were um, present in the great living chola temples which is also part of the unesco uh, rec- uh, recognition as well then avathaswara uh, uh, temple is also in news the avathaswara uh, uh, temple has been chosen as unesco to receive the unesco asia pacific awards for cultural heritage Conver- uh, conservation it is a 1300 year old structure present in again tanjavur dis- uh, district of tamil nadu and it is built by vikrama chola and kula tunga chola okay so it has five uh prakramas uh, that is the enclosures and it is a very famous temple in that area now lastly uh, this one is also important because recently in the 150th anniversary of tribal leader birsa munda prime minister interacted with beneficiaries of pm janman scheme and also launched the dharti abad uh, jan, uh, janjatiya grama utkarsh abhiyan to uplift the private tribal community now uh, janjatiya gorab divas it is launched in 2021 to honor the contribution of birsa munda and celebrate the cultural heritage of uh, and history of tribal communities right now for our exam birsa munda's contribution needs to be uh, talked about and uh, he was a tribal leader a folk hero and a freedom fighter from chotnagpur plateau region right he led the munda rebellion also known as ulugulan it this question was also asked in cgc and against british land policy and taxes it was done against the british uh, land grabbing and land policies right so he uh, advocated for advocated for tribal rights self rule and ownership of land he also was instrumental in chotnagpur tenancy act of 1908 and founded the uh, birside faith and he was also revered as the dharitri abba or father of the earth right so his birth anniversary of november 15 was celebrated as janajatiya gorab divas right and uh, this is important because it is the 150th anniversary of tribal leader bitsa munda so that's all for today this uh, marks the end of the current current series for the 2025 prelims i hope you have found something meaningful from this uh, please revise all the uh, topics and the uh, videos from the youtube channel of geology concepts i hope you all the best and see you in the next one